Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to the video four. What is the multi box trace for objects node? Let's fire up our quick little example. Our multi box trace for objects node is right here. You'll actually notice it's not really anything special right now. Well, by default, when you're using the multi traces or even the box traces, they're not really going to give you anything special. Now, I have covered the box trace for objects node, which is here, and I've covered that in another video. So, all of these inputs are explained more in detail there. We're going to go ahead and cover what the differences are. And honestly, the only difference is we're going to be returning back instead of the one single hit from our box trace, we will be returning back all of the hits in our box trace. That's why it's the multi box trace. It probably should have named it like, I don't like, multi box trace seems like you're firing off multiple traces, but you're not, you're just getting back multiple objects. But regardless, let's go ahead and see how this is set up. So for my example, let's actually give it a box size. Ah, shoot, let's give it 40, let's give it 40, here we go. And we'll go ahead and fire this off again. Now you'll notice we actually have something happening here. We have a couple little collision lines there. So remember, like our multi-box, like our normal box trace for objects, we need a type that we are looking for. In this case, I'm going to use the world dynamic. Eh, let me go ahead and add the pawn as well. So right now, if it traces out something inside of our box as it goes from the start to the end, and it is a world dynamic object type or a pawn object type, it's going to add that to our array. And then when it's done getting to the end point, it's going to give us back that array. So when we hit play and I hook up my actual count node here, we're going to see we're hitting three things. If I move in front of this, we're going to notice we're hitting six things, three and six. By three, we have two spheres and our cube, which are all set to dynamic. And then here we have myself, my collision volume, and my nose as three more. Now you may be wondering why it has stopped. Well, this is as far as it's gotten to in terms of colliding with things. There's nothing else dynamic behind here. If we were to change our array to add in something like world static, and we hit play, you'll notice that we now have five results. You don't see our gray box here anymore. Green box, not gray. You'll see it's actually back here where our last impact point is. Not end point. In, not impact technically, but the collision point of our hit. And that's because we are telling it to stop based on the world dynamic pawn and world static. Now, again, the only difference between our multi box and our single box is if I was to do this, our single box version would stop in the top left. This version will continue on until it gets to our endpoint. One good use for this is if you actually use it as a box container for everything around a point. Rather than just going from a start to an end using a cube for your tracing, you basically expand out from where you are and then see what's around you. Now in order to do that, you need to make sure your start and your end, even though it doesn't make sense, make sure they are not the same. Your start and your end have to be slightly different. Now, I said it doesn't make sense, but when you explain it properly, it does. Keep in mind our trace is basically sweeping from one spot to another as it goes from the start to the end. And as it goes from the start to the end, it checks for blocking and overlapping collisions. So we have to have a tiny little bit here from start to end so the sweep actually happens and it checks to see if any of our object types are being collided with. So now if we do this, and let's make this a little bigger, let's make this 100 squared, 100 cubed. We'll see our little box here. 
and we'll see it's red because it's not colliding with anything. And then when I walk into it, my nose will and we'll get a value. If I walk all the way in, we're going to get three. We're going to get the first value when my collision volume hits, if I can get close enough. We'll get another volume when I hit, and then we'll get a third volume when I my collision volume and my nose hit. And it's useful if maybe you want to do a check. Let's say you want to see everybody that's within our room when we do something. So you could always do a multi-box trace from the inside of the room, have it go to the size of the room, check to see what's inside of it, make sure it's only a certain type. Maybe you want to ignore our walls and our things like that. Check for only like our dynamic things like maybe a chair or just check for maybe an enemy custom object type you've created. So we want to count how many enemies are in our room. And we can do maybe a little survey or something like that. Remember the rest of these values are covered in our single box trace for objects node. This is going to wrap up our multi box trace for objects node.